Good afternoon, Reno. Recently, the sage grass has been taken off of the endangered species list. While this is a step in the right direction for conservationists, we still have they still have a long way to go to get where they want with like nobody on the um, endangered species list. Now we have Juke. On this programming, we will be talking about uh, habitat loss in the Nevada area. Habitat loss is uh, when a habitat, like a forest or wetland, is so al altered. Is, yes, altered. Is altered so dramatically that it can no longer sustain sustain the species that live inside of it. Plants and animals native to Nevada have been pushed out of their homes because of this. Um, would you like to introduce yourself? Sure. My name is Dan Hoddle, and I am a public affairs officer with the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. How long have you uh, been with this organization? I've been with the Fish and Wildlife Service for about three years, but with the federal government for about 18. Wow. Um, what is your job, or what do you do here? I'm the spokesperson and public relations officer, so what that means is I educate the public about what the Fish and Wildlife Service does uh, across the country. Okay. How many species in Nevada have been impacted due to loss of habitat? We have almost 40 species that are protected by the Endangered Species Act in Nevada. About half of them are uh, endangered species, about half of them are protected species or threatened species, and then some of those are even plant species. So we have a number of uh, wildlife like greater sage grouse, and we have a number of fish like the Lahontan cutthroat trout, which is also the state fish in Nevada. And then we also have um, spring snails, we have um, amphibians, frogs and toads. So there's a lot of different things that are affected by habitat loss. And that habitat loss means a lot of different things. Why should we protect these species? And what do they offer to Nevada? Well, in the case of a lot of our threatened and endangered species, these are species that if we don't do something to protect their habitat, especially in Nevada, which is one of the driest states in the country, um, we could run the risk of losing these animals altogether. And that means that there may only be a handful of them left in some, in some cases. So if we don't do things to actively protect their habitat, uh, we could find these species uh, getting so degraded that they may not even be present one day. And we, you, we just for the support and the health of the overall ecosystem, we don't want any species to, to completely disappear. Is habitat loss the main factor in the endangerment of these species, or is there something else? Habitat loss to these species is pretty important because it, it comes down to threats, human threats. So things like overdevelopment of, of houses and, and construction on new properties where ground has to be cleared way for housing developments and things like that. These are all disturbances, there could be disturbances to habitat of threatened and endangered animals. You also have overgrazing, too many, too many animals grazing out on the landscape where there's protected species. You have wildfires, you have other threats that are human caused. So um, habitat losses is, is probably half of the equation. The other half is things like predation, other animals eating the animals are or hurting their habitat or their population numbers that way. What could the average civilian do to help protect these species? Well, the Fish and Wildlife Service does a lot on a federal level to ensure things like mining and oil and gas exploration, development, commercial development, and things like that are um, go through a pretty stringent process of identifying what kind of species might be in an area that needs to be developed or is looking to be a project for development. Um, we also look at, um, we enforce the regulations of the Endangered Species Act to, to ensure that some of these projects are done smartly so that people are either um, minimally impacting or not impacting animals or wildlife fish at all. Um, but the, as far as the average citizen, it's things like um, just adhering to rules. So in, say in the state of Nevada, which is 
almost largely owned by the federal government where you have a lot of public lands and recreational area so you can um, just follow rules by not riding motorbikes and ATVs through areas where there might be protected species or just paying attention to fishing regulations so that you're not um, uh, overfishing or not um, bringing in aquatic species and putting them in lakes and rivers and streams so that it hurts aquatic habitats. So there's a lot of things that's just pretty much following the rules of what wildlife agencies, state agencies, set forth about what's, um, what's beneficial for Nevada wildlife. Okay. Traffic is a little rough today. The way you drive, I can't imagine.